it is because of it is because of who you are that you do what you do so we thank you it is because of who you are that we are who we are in you and we want to thank you father thank you because you are the stable foundation of our lives the immovable the unshakable and uh, you know you know our hearts father that we are rested fully completely settled in your integrity your character we thank you now this morning as our hearts are engaging your heart we receive understanding and wisdom we receive life we receive all that you have in your good heart for us thank you father and with your word comes deliverance and healing and salvation so we thank you we thank you we thank you i i remember how when you speak the life that is in your spirit is poured out and wherever this life goes to it enlivens everything that it touches so this morning i want to come alive a lot more than before and i'd like everyone that will receive the word to come alive as well in the name of jesus thank you lord we praise you bible says that all things are clear before the lord with whom we deal so you know every cell of our bodies every thought of our minds of our hearts and we thank you because all things are clear and then you also say that all things work together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose so we know that you will address every need and meet it fully because you are the all sufficient god thank you father we praise you hallelujah in the name of jesus amen praise the lord hallelujah can we just praise god together just tell him thank you just tell him thank you thank god for what he has been doing for you thank god for who he is to you thank god for what his word says just give him thanks you have fed us you strengthened us you delivered us you stayed with us thank you father thank you for you are faithful to your word thank you father every promise that you have made has always been positive it's been a yes to us toward us and we thank you we thank you because there is nothing that you have that you have not given us access to we thank you because we can communicate heart to heart because we share one spirit ah hallelujah we share your spirit we share your nature we have your nature in us we thank you we have the nature of the living god dwelling within us we are one with you praise you we 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 extol you we adore you we exalt you we lift you above all our desires and fears all our worries and anxieties you are lord you are bigger better taller oh you are all encompassing we praise you lord we thank you our deliverer the lifter of our heads truly you rejoice over us with singing ah for our, the lord our god is with us you renew us we praise your holy name lord 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness, immeasurable goodness, unsearchable goodness. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you because you have translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Mm. And it is in him that we have forgiveness and we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Woo! We praise you. We praise you for you redeemed us. You paid the full price for us to be restored to you. Thank you. We are no longer under the dominion of sin, but we are right now in the kingdom of God, where we have access to all that God is and has and can do. And we thank you. Our hearts are enlarged to receive from you. Our minds are open. Thank you, Lord. And I take authority over every distraction, over every doubt, fear, anxiety, unbelief. And I bind you and I cast you out. And I declare that our hearts and minds be open to receive the engrafted word of God, which has the ability to change, to transform and save us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer and that you will use my tongue to write your will in the hearts and minds of your people this morning is so indelibly uh, ingrained. Thank you. Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I'd like us to look at the book of uh, Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 5. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1. It says, therefore, he said, I beseech you or I beg you, therefore, to be imitators. Let me um, he says here, become then followers of God as children beloved. Hallelujah. In another place, he says, therefore, be you imitators of God as dearly beloved children. As dearly beloved children, be you imitators of God. We live in a time when people... Nations are forming alliances and breaking up alliances. Businesses are buying each other up. There are relationships. We, we look for those that look good and project. We try to project and see who and who looks successful. What is the future? What does it look like? And then we form relationships and alliances and we copy and adapt and we read and study after those that appear successful or appear appealing to us. And then we build bridges to try to learn from them, to try to copy their methods and strategies. But the scripture, because you are a child of God, the scripture has given us instructions on who our role model should be. So I'm going to be speaking on our role model is God. Amen? Our role model is God. Your role model is God. The, that first verse there is chock full of stuff that can be dealt with for months. You see, therefore, that means there was a conversation going on first in chapter 4, at the end of it, all right? Where he says, chapter 4, verse uh, Ephesians chapter 4, I think verse 32 was talking about instructing us to forgive, just like Christ, uh, God in Christ Jesus has forgiven us. And then, in other words, he started the discourse by saying, copy the character of God who forgave and forgive one another. Amen? So he says for us to forgive each other. And now, then Paul then uh, stepped up to the next rung in the ladder and he said, therefore, I beseech you to imitate your father. 
because you are his beloved children. That's what he's saying. All right. Imitate your father because you are his beloved child. Can you say I'm a child of God? Say it up to me. Yes, and I have to be like my father. Yeah, it is compulsory that you be like your father. Amen. <laughs> amen. Come on, amen. Cats make sounds and act like their parents. Dogs do the same. Animals and birds, they act in certain ways and express themselves in certain ways according to their parents. We are born of God. Amen. Uh, 1 John chapter 4. Anybody? 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. What does it say? If you help me quickly, anyone online who has a um, close to the mic online would, could help us. What does it say? It says you are of God. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says you belong to God. All right? Little children. And you have, not shall, you, you have defeated, all right, the evil one or the liars, or you have overcome them. It didn't say you are going to overcome. So the victory that we have is inherited. It's just because of who we are. Come on now. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm already happy. And we haven't started. You know what I'm saying? You know how, how you see you know, sometimes you are doing something. Okay, let's say taking exams and you see these people that always sound very smart, you know, and you see them and you say, oh, those guys, these ones are going to take A's. Those A's and A's and A's and A's and A's. And then they look like, but, you know, sometimes you see some and they look like they are going to be the, the winners, the ones that will be successful. They sound smart. Now, let me say something here, talking about smartness. We are not called to be smart. Smartness is good, all right? We are, we, our pursuit is not to be smart. Our pursuit is to be wise. Hallelujah. So when our kids, and I'm saying this now to parents, when our kids don't answer so quickly and sound smart, don't think something is wrong with them. It's wisdom that counts. And the smart ones are the ones employed by the wise ones. <laughs> amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. So don't let that fast talker, the sound, the smart sounding person fool you. Wisdom trumps smartness. All right. So the scripture says, ye have God and ye have overcome. The, the fact that we belong to God has set us apart as overcomers you are born into the family of the winner so you are a winner <clears throat> amen you are a winner praise god if you are born into the family of the winner you are a winner if you are born into the family of a singer you are expected to sing or to do well in singing or some form of music thank you so much Praise God. Hallelujah. The fact that you belong to God has made you a winner. Now, when we talk about imitating God, some of us may see it as far-fetched. How do I imitate God? Me, to imitate God. Doesn't it look like something that you can't achieve? Let's be honest. If you hear that, it seems like that's a high goal. The bar is so high. How am I going to reach it? How do I begin to act like God? God is way up there, and I'm down here. The truth is that God is way up there, and I'm way up there with him. That is what the scripture says. The scripture says we are seated in Christ Jesus, far above all principalities and powers. Amen? He said we are seated with Christ. And where is Christ seated? The Bible says and Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. In other words, the right hand is not the literal right side of the Father. Amen. It's seated at the approved place of the Father. That is the right hand. Amen. A place that the Father has designated as a place of honor to him. That is where Christ is seated. Amen. Come on, amen. 
And the Bible says we are seated there with him because he's the head. All right? He's the head. So you, can't, you are here, for those of us who are here in church physically, the, you know, in person, your body is not at home. Your body is here with you. Your body is here, and your head is here with your body. Am I right? So that's how we are joined. We are joined to, we are joined with, we are joined to, and we are joined with. We are joined to Christ, so we are one body, and we are joined with Christ in our access to the fullness of God. Hallelujah. So if it sounds intimidating for when we hear about imitating God, I'd like us to know that it is simpler than we expect. Remember, God will not ask you to do something that he has not, first of all, given you the ability to do. Before he makes a demand, he has already made a deposit. Hello? Before God makes a demand, he has already made a deposit. Before God makes a demand, can I say something to someone here? You know, sometimes you know deep down your heart the level you are supposed to be operating, right? You know, either financially or job-wise or positionally or whatever or spiritually, you know the level. In your heart, you know, I belong at this place. I belong at this level. You know that. You know that, right? Now, what happens is, how did you know that? You knew that because that is the truth. In your spirit, what you see is where you are. Amen? Physically, it may not match it. Why? Because we make... It requires work and force to push yourself to that point. And human nature, we give excuses. I, am a, I used to be a chief in making excuses. You know, oh yeah, you know, because of so-and-so or because of this, that is why this didn't happen, that didn't happen, this didn't happen. So we, and I, I'm used to saying this, anything you, anytime you find an excuse, you have just found a reason to remain where you are. Amen. I learned it from me. Okay, I'm talking about, talking about myself, talking to myself too. You know, everything that I have made an excuse over, I have never won in that area. So what I did was that I removed all excuses. Amen? Praise God. When I realized that for God to put me, to put something in my heart, that means he has, if God says, I want you to go to uh, the North Pole, the resources are already there. Amen? The resources are already there. I was just chatting with my wife on our way here, and I said, well, I've repeated it many times. I said, God said to me when he called me, he said, the harder you work, the more you grow. He said that to me. He said, the ministry grows. The harder you work, the more you grow. No wonder. I'm settling here and he will say, I told you to go out, go out, go and preach, go out, travel, go out. And he always comes when seemingly physically he knows that the dollar is gone to the last peace, you know what I'm saying, the last dollar, that is when he will come and remind me, remind me, I told you to go out, what are you sitting down for? Every time I'm relaxing, he will say, go out, go preach, go out, because of what he has said to me. In other words, I'm trying to confirm to you that before God makes a demand, he has first and foremost made a deposit. Let me ask you, let me just give you an example to support that. If you turn in your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 5, all right? Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Because God is telling us to love one another in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2, all right? So Romans 5, verse 5, he says, love, uh, what does he say? Make it not a shame, am I right? Help me out. Help me out. Anyone? Chapter 5, verse 5. Yeah? Talking about patience and compassion and endurance and all that. He say for the half, yeah, go ahead. Hope does not put us to shame. Thank you. Because God's love is deposited or shared abroad or poured lavishly into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, amen. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Do you know when he did it? 
Did you, did you realize when he did it? Did he announce to you when he was doing it? No, he didn't. He didn't. And so he has the audacity, the right to make a demand on what he has put in you. If you don't make a deposit in the bank, if you go there to want to cash money, the police will escort you out. Am I right? God has, first of all, lavishly poured love into our spirit. And then he turns around and say, hey, with the love I have given you, love another person. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your, and then what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Before he tells us to heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons, what did he say? In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said that you shall receive. He didn't say you shall earn power. He didn't say you shall generate power, thank you. But he said you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So he made a deposit of power and authority in us. Then he told us, use that that I have given you to deliver people. Amen. Come on, amen. The issue of imitating God is not so much as, it's not impossible. It's actually easy to imitate God, all right? It says, imitate God as dearly beloved children and walk in love just as Christ has loved us and gave himself as a sacrifice for us and that sacrifice became a sweet fragrance to the nostrils of the Father. Amen. Come on, amen. Why is the Father so pleased with that sacrifice? Because that sacrifice was not selfish. He wasn't doing it for his own benefit. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he didn't, Jesus did not need to die. Jesus did not need to carry my sin. Jesus did not need to bear my, my sicknesses and, 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 and my diseases. He didn't need those. Neither did God need to lay it on him, except that he wanted me to be free. So there was no selfishness in Christ. I'm going to show you a, a little example here, and I hope I can get this right, all right? I'm going to show you something here, all right? Now, for someone who, for those of us who are born again, where is the one that stood well? None of them st standing well? Okay, let's see here something. I'm going to show you something right here. All right? Now, if you can see this, can you see it? All right? If you can see this, this is your spirit. This, is your, this one is your spirit. The glass I'm holding is your spirit. The Bible says God is light. Am I right? Okay, so we're going to use the candle as a representative of God because it's light. Am I right? So the light is, that is the spirit of God, which is the spirit of light. The light, all right, resides in your human spirit and in my human spirit. This is where God dwells. The God, Jesus, all right, is the same thing. If you say Holy Spirit, say God the Father, is all the same thing, all right? But the Bible says the spirit of Christ, Galatians 4 verse uh, uh, 6. Galatians 4 verse 6. He said because we have been redeemed from sin, from verse 5, now we have, been, we have been adopted into the family of God. Therefore, God has put the spirit of his son. The spirit of God did not quench, okay? All right, I put it back. All right, <laughs> okay, good. The Spirit, he said, God has put the Spirit of His Son in our hearts. Hallelujah. God has put the Spirit of His Son, the Spirit of Christ, in our hearts. So that's how the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the one that resides in this. This is your spirit, the glass. And when the Holy Spirit here, He receives from the Father and He passes it into your spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, if you take this clean spirit and let you see how transparent the glass is, how clean it is, all right? This glass is clean because it has gone through the blood of Jesus, just like you've been through the blood of Jesus. You have been recreated. You are brand new. If you were not, if you were not, for those who have not seen Jesus, who have no, have no experience with Jesus, their spirit is dead. Can you see? 
is dark, is dead. Anything like when you hear the Bible talk about darkness, it's talking about anything that is devil related. It's of the devil. That is why in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, ye were once darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Hello, can you see me? Can you see me? Ye were once darkness. We were dead in sin. You can see there's no light in this one. The spirit is dead. All right? Your spirit is dark, is dead, and there's no light in it. All right? So you are, that's how a sinner is. It doesn't matter whether the whatever they have surrounding them, whether they are the most famous, most wealthy, they are dead in sin. All right? Now, but when you come into Christ, Bible says a new person has been created. A new spirit has been recreated. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, oh, he said, as many as are in Christ Jesus, all those that are in Christ Jesus are a new creation. The old is gone. Remember, the old is not washed. It's not refurbished. Amen? God did not come to renovate you. God did not come to refurbish you. God created a brand new you to replace the old one. And the old one is tossed to the side, never useful again. So this is who we are. Amen? Now, as a Christian, when you have that, your spirit is brand new. The Holy Spirit is in you. But here is this one. And now we set this. I hope I can set it in there without quenching it. All right, good, it's settling. How bright is the light? Not really, not really. Am I right? It's not, it's not bright enough. Though your spirit is clean, but it is in a dirty house. It's in a dirty environment. It is in a blurry environment. It is not absolutely blurry because you are already familiar with the word of God to an extent. You know that you don't go barging into things or breaking into someone's house or committing murder anymore. So you can see the bright, some little flicker of light there. You have some sense of the will of God. This is the mind. This is the mind that is not renewed. A mind that is not renewed hinders the recreated brand new spirit that you have in you. And this is your soul. The mind is where the soul, the, the, the soul is where the mind, the will um, dwells, all right? So this is how we see, and this is the place that makes excuses. This is the place that doesn't want to go through the stress. The soul is lazy. This is the one that says, ah, yeah, yeah, you know, ah, and we give all the complaints and the excuses. This is where uh, all the gossips all the doubts, all the fears, all the things that are of the world, all the competition, all the unforgiveness, that is what has made this thing so dirty now. All right? So the Bible says, it said to imitate God, right? I cannot imitate God with this, in this condition. All right? This hinders the work that God did in my spirit. Amen. This is clean. This will go to heaven. But before we get to heaven, we are supposed to manifest Christ here on earth. All right? And this will prevent you from manifesting what Christ has done. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. So we have to now start to clean this up. And how do we clean it? Can you go back to... Uh, uh, Roman, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse 8. Look at verse 8, and I'm reading by heart, or maybe I have somebody help me out. He said, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So what did he say? He said, therefore live like the children of light. Is that not what he says? Let, let your life produce the fruit of those that are in the light. Amen. Come on. Let your what? Life produce, live like the children of light by cleaning, by renewing your mind. By what? Renewing your mind. By what? Renewing your mind. By what? Renewing your mind. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Look over at Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at it together, please. Colossians chapter 3. All right. 
Colossians chapter 3. Are we there? Verse 10. What does it say? Help me out, please, anyone. And have put on the new man. Which and have put on what? The new man. Which is renewed in knowledge. Which is renewed in knowledge. After the image of him that created him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In other words, this was the old man. The, your spirit is, you are saved, so your spirit is clean. But it is dwelling in a mind that is not renewed with the word of God. So this is where we grow. I'm a Christian. Why, is my, why am I struggling so much? I'm a Christian. Why is the devil doing this to me? I'm a Christian. Why? Is it, why? Because your mind is not renewed. I cannot imitate God with this kind of mindset. Amen? This kind of mindset contrasts the mindset of God. So for me to imitate God fully, I have to now walk on my mind. This is watercolor, right? This is watercolor. So if I want to wash this, what do I do? I use water. Am I right? I use water. I keep rinsing it, keep rinsing it. I'm pouring it away, keep rinsing it. All right? I keep rinsing it, keep washing it, keep scrubbing it with water. And then you're going to see that this one will become as clean as this. All right? Now with this, this is a renewed mind. You can see the light. If, if it was dark here and you turned out the light, turned off the light, you're going to see that with this alone, we can find direction. But with this, we are not able to find direction. Why? Because this has made us blind. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Bible says something in the, in the book of Peter. Peter was saying, he said, those who do not add to their faith the virtues, like knowledge, like uh, all the other. Let's, let's go over there. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. First Peter, the one that says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. That's the verse. That's the chapter I'm looking for. If you are there before me, help me out. All right. I think it's First Peter chapter 2. Is that, is that another one? No. Maybe Second Peter. Maybe Second Peter chapter, let me see here. Okay, good. Okay, it's First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter, uh, sorry, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. He says, as all things to us, his divine power, the things pertaining unto life. I'm reading from, I'm translating Greek straight to English. Let me see here. Let me change it here. Oh, say, he says here, okay, he says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to what? No. Where does knowledge reside? Knowledge resides in the mind. All right? Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me correct that. The knowledge of God is in our spirit, okay? But for it to benefit us, we have to educate the mind, transform our mind to correspond with what the spirit carries. Hello? Hello now? Amen? Do you know that, okay, let, let, me, let me back up a little bit and explain something. I know time is going, I'll be quick. In this, your recreated human spirit, there is no lack in it. Amen? All the blessing of God. When you read in the Bible where the Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All that blessing is in your spirit right now. The knowledge, the omnipotence, the omniscience of God, everything that God is resides within you right now. Amen? What does it mean when the Bible says it pleases God that the fullness of God should dwell in Christ bodily? Bodily includes us. Amen? The fullness of Christ that resides in Christ, uh, or the fullness of the, of the Father that resides the, of the Godhead, resides and is manifested in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus is incomplete without you and me. Because we are the body, he's the head. Hallelujah. Are, are, we, are, we, are we together? All right. Okay. Is the thing showing? Okay. 
Praise God. All right. So you can see here that this is what everything, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, power, everything, health, wealth, success, is all deposited. The scripture says God has given, not going to give. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through our experiential knowledge of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, when he said here, I'm going to read something here for us. If you come with me, I think let's jump over. All right. Look at verse Look at verse, let, let's even go, go together. Let's go step by step. All things that we have received all things by coming to know, coming to know him, all right? The one who called us to himself by the means of his marvelous glory and excellence. I'm reading from the NLT. Because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you <laughs> to share in to share his divine nature. So when you say that you are like God, it's not heresy. Amen? That is why he says, because you are like God, you got to act like your father. In Ephesians, he says he has given us precious promises to share his divine nature. Or just like saying to share his human nature. Amen? To share animal, share animal nature. Am I right? Uh, trees share tree nature or plant nature. We, God's sons of God, share God's nature. That is what the word of God says. If you share the nature of somebody, that means you belong to that species. <laughs> woo, woo, I know somebody's going to, uh, not, not you. You know, I get, I, we get a lot of questions and feedback from, uh, uh, from YouTube and other places that, you know, that people don't, they, don't, they say you speak heresy. No, you belong to a different species, the species of Christ. Amen? The species of God. You are a spirit being just like your father is. And he says he has given us the divine nature. And, all right, he's given us the divine nature and escaped the world's corruption caused by human desires. So what are the things that corrupt us? Human desires. Especially when those desires are impure. All right? Now, look at it. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement. What, it, what does it mean to supplement? Add. You know how we take supplements? Okay, you, you, are, you eat and you walk out, and you, but you still take vitamin D and you still take vitamin E, the supplement. Because they help to supplement the food that you are taking that is either not fully rich or your body is not able to absorb. Am I right? So he says here, he says, supplement uh, your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. Oh, so faith needs supplement of virtue. All right? Okay, he says here, uh, uh, okay, and moral excellence with what? Knowledge. With what? Knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. So what, how many supplements are there? He said moral virtue is one. Knowledge is two. Self-control is three. Patience is four. Endurance. Patience and endurance are the same, I think. All right. And then godliness. So about six or seven. And with, okay, seven. And with godliness, broadly affection. And in other words, and broadly affection with love for everyone. Now, look at verse 8. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Look at verse 9. But those who fail to develop in this way are what? Short-sighted and blind, uh, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Oh, time is gone. But we haven't even scratched it yet. It's, isn't it exciting? It's exciting, right? So, in other words, what we got to do is your spirit is renewed 
and your spirit renew your soul too. How do you renew your soul? You renew your soul with the word of God. Memorize the word of God. Study the word of God. Stay on the word of God. Talk about the word of God. Think about the word of God. Discuss the word of God. Argue with the word of God. Submit to the word of God. Do the word of God. If you don't understand, go and pray and fast to understand. Do you know that many of us, we pray and fast to get the devil off our back than we pray and fast to get to understand the word of God. People don't hardly, very few people fast and pray, Lord, I need to know what your word is saying. I need you to, re to teach me the word. I'm not after getting Satan or getting money or getting that. No, teach me your word. I want to know. Hallelujah. Because every, you can get Satan off your back today. If you do not grow in your knowledge, she shows up tomorrow. He shows, or he, not she. He shows up tomorrow. All right. If you get Satan off your back today, do you know it's easier to, uh, to be a millionaire than to maintain the millions? In other words, it's easier to succeed than to remain successful. The reason why some of us, we rise and we, Christians I'm talking about, not us here, but Christians, we rise to a certain height and then we come down, is because we have not devoted our hearts to the word of God. The more you devote yourself to the word of God, the more, the easier it is for you to take those supplements virtue, moral character, or the things that the Bible recommended, those seven items, and in love. And you cannot do that on you, in your own strength. That is why the provision uh, is there in the word of God. You know what? You know one thing about the word? Can I come closer? And you know one thing with the word of God? You know one thing with the word of God? The word of God is spirit. Amen? When you are studying that written Bible, the written word, what you are doing is that you are listening, you are, you are watching, you are listening to the word, the spirit of God, the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the one that has inspired the word that is written in the book. So when you expose your mind to it, when you do what? When you uh, uh, memorize it, when you are dwelling in the word, when you are thinking of the word, when you are meditating in the word, reciting the word, what you are doing is that you are engaging the spirit of God. And what happens when you bring, when you do, you rub your hands like this and you rub it fast and rub it constantly. What is going to happen is that you are going to generate heat. Am I right? You generate heat. And you know that you can use two rocks and you scratch them together and you can cause a fire to come out. Am I right? What happens is that when you, your mind is engaging the word of God, constantly engaging the word of God, what happens is a revival, a spiritual fire is kindled in your spirit. And that spiritual fire burns. And as you stay there, the fire will keep burning and keep burning and keep burning until it will consume the whole of you before you know it. That is what we call the anointing. That is what we call the anointing. The anointing is the outflow or the expression of the, the fire of God, the spirit of God that is burning in your spirit. And by constant meditating, you are fanning it, you are fanning it, and you are fanning it. And especially when you love others the way God has loved you. Hallelujah. Is this clear? Does, is it helpful? All right. So renew your mind. Renew your mind. Get your kids to renew their mind. There is no gain in anything uh, that is on the internet other than the word of God. Satan, do you know, let me, let me just round up here with this. Is that the second round up or the first round up? Or the, that's the second round up, I hope. Okay. You know, spirit, the sp spirits travel through sounds and light. You know that, right? Spirits travel through sounds and light. This is why when you see the concerts of the unbelievers, and sometimes they see like they are fainting in the spirit. You know, have you ever seen, watch Michael Jackson? Okay. When the thing is going, and 
the, the sound that is coming and the nonsense, the, the deadness that is coming from their mouth, they are releasing the demons that are inside them and they release them on people. And the sound carries this music. And what, how do they go in? They go in through the hearing, the ear gates. All right. And TV, things we watch as well, can get into, because sight, the eye gates, the demonic spirit can get into the mind of, our, of, of humans through what they watch, through what they hear. Amen. Come on, amen. You can see now why Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes to not see anything that is ungodly. Hallelujah. When our children, when we say, don't watch this, don't, they think that we hate them. All right? All right? They think we hate them. But what we are doing is that we are, we are saving them from a, a load of issues and troubles. Because everything that goes into their, into the, their eye, through their eye gates and their physical body, all the gates, the five gates, you know, where do they go? They go to lodge in their soul. They go there to lodge in their souls. That is where they, you know, have you watched a horror movie? You watch a horror movie and you see that you couldn't sleep. And every time you close your eyes, you see? Why? The spirit that is, is behind that movie lodged in your, so it causes the same effect in your body. And after a few years, if, the, if wisdom is not applied and deliverance is not done, the, those demons can wait for 20 years and later manifest Amen. Now, I'm going into a different topic that is going to be discussed another day, all right? But what I'm trying to say, in essence, is that it is good for us to focus. Remember, if the Bible says for us to imitate God, that means I have to ask myself, would God listen to this? Would God watch that? Would God speak that way? Would God do this? Would God, if he's not going to do it, then I don't want to do it. And here I was driving a long distance, all just recently, all that way up here. And, you know, sometimes you are driving and it seems like you and the car are in autopilot. You know, when sleep is caressing your eyelids and you are about to go. And then the thing, I, I, I press my, uh, my radio to play uh, some, let there be some noise to keep me. And then all of a sudden I heard something that I say, eh, that, that doesn't sound good. It sounds awful. It's one of the, any secular music sounds bad to me now. Oh, I say, thank God I have Kenny Hagen right here beside me. And I just turn my phone on, put, the, uh, put it on Bluetooth and loud. And let us turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. <laughs> and as soon as I heard his voice, I came away. I would rather repeat the same teaching for 20 hours than to hear something nonsense that is going to pollute my mind. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. I watched something that I want to, I want to share with us, parents especially, and people who are, and everyone who is mentoring somebody, leading somebody, you are a senior sister, senior brother, anybody, you have somebody who you are a role model to. Listen to this. The, how do you call them? The New World Order members have now, the New World, the current, uh, whatever they call them, the global economy that are behind all the things. They said, and this is one of their professors, one of their spokesmen said, what they have decided to do now is to let people focus on what? Drugs, entertainment, and there is another one. There were three. So in other words, you can see that they make entertainment so readily and very easy to access right now. Because at that point, they become non-productive. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you what to do. No, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to, I'm just sharing what I do. We don't watch TV in our house. There was a time. I watched, I used to watch a movie called, I, I, I've forgotten the name of the movie. After I watched, it was a long series. I watched bit by bit by bit. And after I finished, I wasn't asking you. <laughs> Thank you, though. All right. After I watched and watched and finished watching, the Spirit of God said to me clearly, 
he said, I won't forget it. He said, don't watch that kind of movie anymore. Amen. In other words, your mind is mine. So don't, don't fill it with junk. Hallelujah. Let me, round, let me close up here. God wants us to be imitators of his, of himself. Amen. He wants us to imitate him. He wants us to be imitators of him. Amen. He wants us to follow his examples. Everything that you see that God will do, go ahead and do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I always say, I would rather be making errors, stumbling toward obedience than to hold myself back in fear and say, what if I make mistakes and never make a move? I would rather be st struggling, falling, getting up, falling, getting up, falling. But the good thing is that when you take that step of faith, he will never let you fall. He stands beside you. Remember Peter? Peter, who stepped out of the boat to walk on water? As he was distracted, because distraction is what causes us to fail. As he was sinking, he said, Lord, save me. And Jesus, who was beside him, reached out and grabbed him immediately. As you, as you take a step of faith and you say, I'm going to start to walk, to follow God. You're going to see that the presence of God, who, who said I will never leave you nor forsake you, will be there to steady you and help you every time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you. We want to be followers of God. We want to be imitators of God. You will not tell us to do something that we do not have the wherewithal to do. And the wherewithal came from you anyway. So we praise you. Father, we know that we cannot pray to you to renew our mind. But you said we can renew our minds through your word. So help us to study, help us to be focused, help us to understand so that our minds will be renewed, so that we can understand your perfect will. Romans chapter 12 verse, 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 verse 2 says, we should not copy the system of the world, but that we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds, so that we'll be able to discern the good, the perfect will of God. So we receive grace to be faithful reflection in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we, can we just do we?